Introduction. A lot has been written about the concept of the mind and developing mental strength for greater success. We all know a lot of the literature with regard to the law of attraction, mastering the mind, and developing good habits to last a lifetime. Yet really developing these practices consistently over time is quite difficult. It is especially difficult when faced with modern-day challenges which seem to be designed to drain away our energy. Such drains can include social media, Wi-Fi, bills and expenses, broken relationships, environmental toxins, smartphones, alcohol, sugar, caffeine, the list goes on. Developing a strong mindset entails consistent practice over prolonged periods of time. It requires a sense of practicality and discipline that is all too often forgotten. It would be a mistake to think that the law of attraction is easy or that meditation will immediately alleviate depression. But if you seriously commit to developing your mindset so that you can focus on what you want over the long term, then the results will be life-changing. To do so, you will need to learn to rely on yourself. As per Indian philosopher Krishnamurti, a theory based on another man's experience in matters of the psyche or of an inward life has no meaning at all. We have to let it go completely because we have to stand alone. Lesson 1 Understanding the Mind The first step in understanding the mind is to realize that your thoughts are what determines your everyday experiences. This is the basic premise of all spiritual texts and esoteric schools of thought. It is also reflected in many scientific spheres such as quantum mechanics. People have certain thought patterns that they picked up from the wider society, from their parents, from groups and organizations etc. They then project these thought patterns onto their surroundings. And they then mistakenly believe that their own projections and interpretations are the truth. But the truth is different for everybody, depending on their particular thoughts. This is why here is so much diversity in the world today. Thoughts become things. A core component of spiritual growth lies in removing all of the thought patterns that we have picked up when we were young. These were just programmed into us. When we learn to remove and reinstall different thoughts and beliefs is when we start to come into our true autonomy as masters over our minds. And this is partially why meditation is recommended across times and cultures. We are able to calmly observe our own thoughts patterns without reaction or involvement. This is one of the only ways that we can see things objectively. Otherwise, we tend to identify with our gender, political ideologies, nationality, or class. And we naturally see this as correct due to our limited life experience. People who do not understand the power of their own minds are largely lost as they cannot identify as conscious creators of their own reality. They will consistently find fault with the world and ask why it is so difficult to contend with. Understanding the power of thoughts is the first step to personal mastery. The insanity of the mind from the perspective of spiritual systems, the mind is irrational, illogical, and insane. We are required to observe the mind and detach from it in order to see its dysfunction. But we can also observe this dysfunction on a grander scale with the wars, hate, environmental destruction, racism, sexism, homophobia, political attacks, broken relationships, government spying programs, smartphone addictions, health problems, and more. Something is a little dysfunctional with the human populace, and this is a result of millions of minds that are not in the right place. Social media and centralized media also serve to program these minds into a state of disempowerment and fear. And advertising also has quite a destructive effort as it encourages people to smoke cigarettes, drink alcohol, and consume sugar and caffeine. An important point to remember is that you are not immune to advertising even if you think you are. When you perceive something it leaves a mental impression in your subconscious. So unless you switch off your TV and avoid going into a shop, you are a victim of advertising. Scientific discoveries and psychological observations There are some scientific discoveries and psychological observations which might be of interest in understanding how the mind works. These include 1. The mind cannot distinguish between real and imaginary. 2. 95% of your activity is subconscious. Try being consciously aware of every key you type on your computer. Your progress will be vastly reduced. 3. Your subconscious has stored everything that has ever happened to you, much like a gigantic computer. 4. We are bombarded with 2 million bits of data every second. It is the job of the subconscious to filter through all of this. 5. The conscious mind remembers between 5 to 9 pieces of information. This information is passed to the subconscious for processing to free up conscious space. 6. Most of our energy expenditure goes towards the brain. These discoveries have important implications. 
If the majority of our lives are fulfilled by the subconscious, it follows that we should try to manipulate our subconscious mind as opposed to our conscious abilities. According to Carl Jung, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Programming of the subconscious for conscious growth is the basis of affirmations and self-hypnosis for empowerment. But along with these strategies, there are other things to consider in order to create a positive mindset for growth and fulfillment. Lesson 2 How to Develop Mental Strength Understanding that your thoughts determine your environment and that you can command your thoughts is the first step. But committing to a daily routine of developing mental and emotional strength is something else entirely. It takes discipline, character, and patience. The idea that we can just manifest what we want is a little misguided. The fact is that you may have spent the last 30 or 40 years anti-manifesting. Focusing on worry and stress, eating the wrong foods, in toxic relationships, with limiting beliefs that have been with you since childhood. These are not removed overnight. It can take years to rid yourself of certain thoughts and ideas, and you have to be constantly vigilant about what you are thinking and what you are consuming. Experiment with exercise. Thankfully, there are many ways to increase your mental and emotional power. And it has never been easier to embark on a campaign of self-development than it is today with all of the resources at your disposal, especially with the internet and instant communications. We have all of the tools. We just need some willpower and determination. One basic way to build mental strength is with an exercise routine. Write out your goals and objectives and see if you can stick with them. This might seem like very basic and fundamental advice. But both diet and exercise provide valuable insights into our behavior and they are the two foundational modalities that mental strength can be built upon. If you do not keep track of the fundamentals you will run into difficulties later on. Trying to become a master of the mind while staring at a TV all day and eating ice cream is just not realistic. Diet and exercise can be used to build a strong character and a healthy body and mind. Experiment with diet. Diet is another place to start developing mental strength. I think we all understand that we will function better without caffeine, sugar, ice cream, and other processed products. Yet many people cannot go a single week without those items which clearly disturb mental well-being. Try and see if you can go on a certain diet for a week. And when you don't stick to it, try and examine why this is the case. You will begin to realize how affected you are by the environment, how just being in a shop or entering a restaurant caused you to act instinctively and buy an item that you knew was unhealthy. In other words, your environment determined your behavior. The importance of the surrounding environment. For mental strength, try to manipulate the environment first. In this way, you will be taking away the opportunity to fail. Manipulating the environment for mental strength will mean that you make use of the concept of minimalism as much as possible. The less information and distractions you have in general, the clearer the mind will be. So clean your room and your office, even the files on your PC. This will have a positive impact on your mental well-being. People who tend to hoard items find fresh mental energy when they let go of their many possessions and send them to the trash heap. Limit the time you spend on television and switch off your phone at night. Eliminating cable is also a good idea. Even things like making your bed in the morning and spending some time out in nature can really help to get the mind in order. Another way of describing the concept of the universe being a product of mind is that the outer reflects the inner. We can easily tell the personality of an individual by the state of his or her bedroom. It can be obsessively neat and tidy or it can be much like a dump. Ideally, it could be neat and orderly with a few items thrown around here and there. Understanding the importance of the environment is an important discovery. It means that we can change external objects and situations that will positively reflect on our internal state, and vice versa. Advertising and media, the negative mental devices. The destructive nature of advertising and the media becomes more important when people start to look inside and understand the power of their own thoughts. If the majority of our actions are subconscious and advertising and media are specifically aimed at manipulating our environment, then they have a large say in how we behave. Scientific data has shown that people are victims of advertising even when they view themselves as impervious. When we see something, our conscious minds might not take it in. But our subconscious most certainly does. So almost by default, we are all victims of the surrounding environment which is aimed at subverting our actions. And it does an excellent job, given that consumerism is running rampant and people are now paying nearly $1,000 for phones alone while morals and ethics fall by the wayside. If you are serious about developing your mind, then it needs to be as clear as possible. 
Reduce your exposure to advertising and media where appropriate. Media is largely negative. And your subconscious mind is simply going to ingest negative material which will be reflected in your conscious daily activities. It is never a good idea to actively seek out this negative information. Most people fool themselves into believing that they need to keep in touch with reality, which is hilarious to people who actually understand how reality operates. Don't let pointless information from advertising, the media, or other people take up valuable cognitive space by default. To limit this exposure, you need to get a little organized and create an empowering environment that is conducive to clear thinking. Lesson 3 Best Practices for Serious Mental Development Once you have a good environment with a reasonable diet and regular exercise, you can investigate practices that are more directly orientated towards mental development. Remember that everything that you do is stretching the mind to some degree or another, whether it is diet, exercise, writing, or walking. But we need to use the most direct methods, and we also want to avoid patterns that do not expand the mind. The following are the best practices for you to really master your own personal psychology. If you want to proceed rapidly, then undertake one or a number of these models. How often and at what intensity you want to do these practices is up to you. Number 1 Meditation Meditation should come as no surprise to anyone as the best kind of practice for mental development. It involves sitting quietly, ideally in lotus position, and observing the movements of the mind. After a period of time, the mind starts to quieten down and become less frantic. You will become less reactive to outside events and be able to monitor and control your thoughts more efficiently. The two most popular kinds of meditation are vipassana and transcendental meditation. Both of these have an extensive body of scientific literature pertaining to their benefits. There is no excuse for not instigating a regular meditation routine. It is verified by science, practiced by many high-level individuals, and has historic roots in spiritual systems. Twice a day for 20 minutes is the recommended time frame for optimal results, morning and evening. You can also consider an intense course for a week to really get started. Number 2 Yoga Yoga is a practice of body movements involving the breath, concentration, balance, flexibility, and physical strength. When the movements are executed in a certain fashion the practitioner comes into a flow state and can complete the whole hour-long routine effortlessly. The coordination of concentration, breathing, and physical exertion are perfect for subduing the mind. It is not possible to exercise the routine while the mind is active, as it gets in the way. Yoga is best completed when it becomes a regular habit that does not require conscious thought. Number 3 Fasting Though this might be described as an extreme method, fasting is one of the best ways to master your mind. Food is more important to a human being than anything else. Giving up food for a significant period of time can have many benefits and takes incredible willpower. Additionally, fasting is the only thing that has been proven to increase longevity in rats and humans perform best when they are a little hungry. There are many different kinds of fast, such as a water fast, a dry fast, a juice fast etc. Consider a three-day juice fast once a month for an emotional and mental detox. Number 4 Mindfulness Mindfulness takes many forms and there are a wide variety of mindfulness practices. It really involves being aware at regular intervals throughout the day. Mindfulness can be combined with meditation for maximum results. In meditation, we are deeply non-focused for 20 minutes or so twice a day. With mindfulness, we are simply more aware of things at periods throughout our working day. For example, we might leave our desks every 40 minutes and just be mindful of our breath for a single minute to detach us from our tasks. Mindfulness is often linked with the breath, as this is a quick route to the present moment. Number 5 Concentration There are many other techniques to increase concentration. You could focus on a candle flame for 5 minutes a day. You can also focus on the top of your nose or your breath. Most spiritual practitioners recommend no longer than 10 minutes of intense concentration on anything. Coincidentally, 10 minutes is the maximum amount of time that a human being can intensely focus on anything, according to the scientific research. There are a wide variety of concentration techniques that you can make use of. Number 6 Any practice with passion or intensity If you can find something that you are really passionate about then you can continue to focus on this with single-minded intensity. This can include painting, singing, dancing, martial arts, creating a business, or anything that you really give 100% of your mental attention towards. This is because you won't have the time to energize negative thoughts or emotions as all of your resources are aimed towards one particular activity. 
This is one of the most effective ways to control the mind and remove destructive tendencies. But unless you are really passionate about something, it can be difficult to develop the concentration and willpower to see it through. This is why most people give up on their resolutions after the initial phase. There are some strategies you can use if you really want to gain control over the mind. They are designed so that you will make breakthroughs that will stand to you over the long term. Consider an 11-day silent retreat in a serene location, out in nature. During this silent retreat, you will meditate twice a day, complete a yoga routine, and stick to a vegan diet without alcohol, sugar, or processed foods. You should also be completely removed from technology during this time. You will benefit such a regime immensely for a number of reasons. You can observe the contrast from the silent retreat and the insanity and noise of the everyday environment. You can also observe the contrast when you reintroduce certain foods back into your diet. You should aim for some kind of seclusive practice to reconnect every three months or so. It will help you to understand that the normal work environment is psychotic and there you can achieve a peaceful state of being without a frantic mind generating fear and anxiety all the time.